Hello class, topic 11 is on the runga kutta approximation method. Another method for approximating solutions to first order ODEs is known as the second order runga kutta method, also known as the improved Euler method. And I will demonstrate this method by approximating one additional point of the solution to the ODE below. So here's our ordinary differential equation y prime equals 0.5y, y of 0 equals 2. We know the exact solution is going to be. 2e to the 0.5t. This is just your classic Malthusian ordinary differential equation with an it's separable and very easy to solve, very straightforward to solve, I should say. And the idea behind the runga kutta method is the uh, following, the second order runga kutta method, or also known as the improved Euler method. So we start with a point that we call the initial point. We'll call it t sub zero or t naught comma y naught or x not y not depending on if x is your independent variable. And then we plug that into the ordinary differential equation that's in standard form, in normal form, which means that the y prime should be isolated and the other side of this expression right here is a function of the independent and dependent variable. I'm using t though for the independent. Now again, in this case, there is no t's in this particular uh, differential equation, no explicit t's. So we can say that this function over here is just a function of y only, but that's not always the case. Sometimes there's t's over here as well. Now to find the slope of a solution that goes through this point, we simply have to plug this point into this uh, function right here and calculate y prime, which is interpreted as the slope of the tangent line. So you're going to get some sort of a slope. Let's do orange for the slope. Let's say it looks like this. And then we would go over an incremental step size of h and then figure out, so we, we calculate this slope here, we'll call it m sub 0, and we calculate the delta, the change in y, which is going to be h times n sub 0. And then we find this point here and we repeat the process. This is the Euler method. Now, the improved Euler method, or the second order runga kutta method, is going to actually not use this slope to find, to approximate the next point. It's going to use this slope, a combination of this slope and another slope. And the other slope that's used, let me go to a different color, is when you get to this point here, and you were to do, anticipate what the slope of the tangent line would be there, by taking this point, and let's call it uh, a naught. comma b naught. We'll say is that point right there. And we plug this ordered pair into this function here to calculate the slope y prime, and we get a new slope. Now what I'm going to do, instead of using m's, I'm going to call these slopes s. So this will be slope sub 0, and then we'll call this one uh, slope sub, sub 1. Or I could say we're free to really pick whatever subscripts we want to pick. I could call it slope 1 and slope 2. So I find these two slopes, and then I average them and use that slope instead to find my actual second point. So I'm not going to actually, I'm not going to stick with a naught b naught as my second point of the approximation. I did do that with Euler's. Right? When we did Euler's method, we this was our second point, and then we proceeded to find another point after that, which would be up here somewhere, etc. But instead, I'm going to use a combination of these two slopes, go back to this point here, and use that new slope. So let me give you, uh, let me color, do color coding. So these are all different looking. Let me move these, these S's around, so the other side. Then the slope I'm actually going to use to find a new point, and let's change, make all that orange, just to make that look consistent. And then the new point I'm going to find, I'm going to use a new slope. Let's go with pink. The new slope is going to be, in this particular drawing, since S2 is more than S1, right? The, the red line is steeper than the, than the green line, their average will be somewhere in between. So we're going to get a new line of a new slope and use that to find a new point. And this is what, the slope of this line here is what I'm going to call my m sub 0, the actual slope I use to find the next point in my approximation. And this slope is the average of my, my two, my green slope and my red slope. And so, still going to be a, a, a change in t given by h. So this, let's do this. 
So this length here is still h, that's not any different. But now we are doing this change in y to get our new point here, which is what we're going to call the t sub 1 comma y sub 1 to find our next point. And so in order to find that, that change in y, I need to do the slope of the pink line, which is m0, and multiply that by the h. And so this construction winds up being uh, the following. So my t1, let's write it down here, t1 will be found by taking t0 and adding h to it. That was the same as with Euler's method. But my new y-coordinate will be my initial y-coordinate, or my previous y-coordinate, and we're going to add to that in this m sub 0 h. And m sub 0 is uh, the average of the two slopes, the first two slopes I would have found using Euler's method. And then once you know this uh, pink point, you start all over again, right? So you're at this uh, pink point, you find a new slope, get to this point, find a new slope, average those slopes and erase them, and then use the average slope to find a the next point. So that one there won't matter anymore. All right? so the, this orange point right here never actually gets used in our approximation. We go straight from the black point to the pink point. And then I just repeat the process to go to a new ping point, and then to a new ping point, etc. Okay, so uh, to do this by hand, we're just going to find one extra point using this process. Our table here, we're going to do one extra step. Uh, we're starting at 0 and going up by 0.5. So right there we can see that our h is 0.5. We've gone up by 0.5. Our initial uh, point is 0, 2, coming from this data right here. So we have 0, 2 is the initial point. Our new t coordinate will be 0.5. We just got to find our new y coordinate. We're looking for this this right here essentially. Okay, the first we're going to do is we're going to plug this point into this differential equation and get the slope. And this is going to give us our our first slope, our s1. So plug zero and two. Uh, there's nowhere here for t equals zero to be plugged into, but we do plug in y equals two and do 0.5 times two and get one. And then, so we get y prime is 1. So we get s1 is, is 1. Now, I will uh, find the new point here, the orange point, the a0, b0. The a0, as you can see from this diagram, let's, uh, I'm going to move some things around a little bit. Let's, call it, let's make this pink so it's all color coordinated, coordinated. And in orange, the a0 will be found by doing uh, t0, and adding to it h, and the b naught will be found by doing y naught and adding to it. Uh, I should change this. That's no longer m. That's going to be s one right there, right? Because the green line had slope s one. So if I go over h, then I need to go up h times s one. So we're going to find the new uh, y coordinate. The b naught is going to be found by starting with the this y coordinate and adding to it h s1. Okay, so we'll find that point next in our uh, table here. So a0 will be uh, start at 0 and add h, so we get the 0. 0.5. And the b0 will be uh, adding to the y coordinate, adding to 2, the product of the slope s1 and the uh, h. The h is not that. The h technically oops, is uh, the 0.5. All right, so these three circled things, we, we're going to start with 2 and add to it the product of these two things. So we're going to do 2 plus 1 times 0 0.5. That's 0 0.5. So we get 2.5. Now, if I was just doing regular Euler's method, this would be the next point in our table here. But since we're doing improved Euler method, or second order Runge Kutta, we're going to use this point only temporarily. It's not going to be the point we wind up with. right? This point we just found right here is our orange point, which is used as a stepping stone to ultimately find this pink point. Okay, so now that we have this point here, we want to find the second slope, the red slope, the slope of this red line right here. So, we have to, so we're, going to, we're going to plug in this point, point 0.5 comma 2.5 into the function right here. Again, the 0.5 has nowhere to go, that's the t-coordinate, but the 2.5 gets plugged in for y, and we do a half of uh, 2.5, and we get 1.25.
and that becomes, that is our uh, second slope. This is our red S2. That's in this drawing here. So now what we do is we actually find the pink slope next, the slope I'm actually going to use to find my next point in my approximation. So that's what the MK column is. And the MK column is the pink slope. We're trying to find M0 in this case, and it's found by taking the S1 and S2, adding them together, and then dividing by 2, so finding their average. So let's add 1 and 1 1.25, that's 2.25, and divide by 2, and we get 1.125. This is the slope that we're actually going to use. It's the slope of the pink line segment here to find our very next point in our approximation. All right, so then the T1, which is this position, it's found by taking T0, which is 0, and adding the H, which is 0.5 to it. So we, we still get the same. In other words, this coordinate and this coordinate should always be the same because the H's were the same in both cases. But we are going to get a, a new Y coordinate that's different than this one. And from this imagery, uh, this imagery is representative of this particular example, meaning the slopes are getting more are steeper as we go. We can anticipate that uh, the pink point will be higher than the orange point for this particular example, right? That's not always the case, but in this case, the pink point will be higher than the orange point. And so we find the new Y coordinate. We find Y1 by doing the original Y coordinate, which is right there, which is two, and adding to it our H, which is 0.5, let me go ahead and just actually write this all this down generally. So we're going to take y sub 0 and add to it h times m sub 0. Right, the same thing we see right there, essentially. And in this particular case, y sub 0 is 2. That's our first y coordinate. h is a step size of 0.5. And our m naught turned out to be the 1.125. So now we have to do half of 1.125. It's going to be 0.5625. And so that gives me a 2.5625, and that is our next approximating point, 2.5625. Uh, Notice that it does wind up being, this number here is a little higher than what we would have done, what we would have found if we had just done Euler's method and stopped at the orange point, but uh, instead now we have a slightly higher pink point right here. And then I would just repeat. Everything I just did in this row here, I will now repeat, but using this as my starting point and get all these new numbers here and then create an, a new row. Obviously, doing this by hand is very tedious. And the exact solution, by the way, when uh, we have an exact solution to work with, it's f of x equals 2 times e raised to the 0.5. I'll put an x there. And f of 0.5. So the exact answer is 2.568. You can see that doing uh, the improved Euler method in one step, instead of stopping at 2.5 as my next approximate, as my as an approximation, it takes us to 2.56, which is close to the 2.568. That is the exact value of the solution when uh, t is 0.5. So that's what is going on here to improve our approximating method. Obviously, going to the next slide, that this process is greatly sped up by using technology. So we're going to use technology to perform the improved Euler's method, also known as the second order Runge-Kutta method. So when you see this, this also means improved Euler method. Uh, to approximate the solution to the given ODE for the time interval from 0 to 1, so the same ODE, and we're going to be using the indicated step sizes of, we're going to adjust our step sizes to 0.2. Up here we did a demonstration with a 0.5 step size, but we're going to go down to a 0.2 step size. Uh, using Euler's method produces this data. The exact solution produces this data. And we are going to show you how to do the Runga Kutta, second order Runga Kutta method to get this data. So I'm going to begin by going to our Canvas homepage. If you scroll down in the schedule, next to the topic 11, I put two links. There's sheet 2 and sheet 3. Sheet 1 is referring to the Euler method sheet that I shared with our last lecture. And then sheet 2 and sheet 3 are going to be two different uh, spreadsheets that we're going to use to help with today's topic. 
Sheet two is the second order Runga cut approximation or, or uh, improved Euler's, but sheet three will be what's called the fourth order. We'll talk more about that in a moment. So when you click on sheet two, it'll open a new tab, take you to this uh, Google spreadsheet, and it'll be in view only. You won't be able to edit this. This is my file here. So do not click this and then request access. I will not give you edit access. Instead, go to file and say make a copy. And when you do that, you'll have full, it'll save to your drives. So if you click over here on the right, you can see what account you're logged into. I'm gonna just switch over to my personal account because that will let me edit next. But you, you're gonna make a copy to your personal account or your st student account, whichever, and then you'll have edit access to your own copy. Okay, now how to work this sheet. Your initial conditions are you plug in right here and your step size you plug in right here. I first wanted to show you that the calculation we did above, uh, how this does it for us a lot faster once we enter in all the, the formulas. And there's a little bit of work here to make this all happen. Everything that's grayed out is done automatically. You just have to enter in data into the white fields. So let's begin with the initial condition is 0, 2. That's already correct in place here. And the step size, if I go back to the original slide, we had a step size of 0.5. So I'm going to put a 0.5 there and hit enter. And you saw all the numbers just changed. And the other thing you have to change is this cell right here. Now it's currently entered with the correct formula, but I'm going to go ahead and delete this for now. And we're going to follow the instructions you see right here in white. Enter the appropriate appropriate formula in cell H3. Now I'm now realizing this is actually cell H5, so uh, make note of that. This is H5. It used to be H3 until I did some cosmetic things, and now it's technically H5. But anyway, this top left cell is the one you want to uh, make your change in. And since our differential equation says that Y prime is equal to 0.5 times Y, then we want to say that this cell is equal to 0.5 times, you have to do the time symbol, and then click on the two coordinates, that's the y coordinate. Remember the t coordinate isn't actually used in our function, so it's just 0.5 times the y coordinate, so times g5, and then hit enter. Now these other cells aren't going to change automatically. They're, they're going to be maybe an old formula. It turns out that the formula is already correct in all of these, but when you switch to a new differential equation, these all these white cells don't change automatically. But you enter the correct formula into this cell, make sure it's right, and then you can copy it to all cells in columns H and K using the macro copy formula under tools. So go to tools, go to macros, and then there's a, a, mac, a copy formula macro here, or you can use this shortcut to operate it. Click copy formula, and it's going to change all the white cells. Now this table actually goes down very far, I didn't make it go to 1,000 like I did the last Euler's one, but I did make, stop it at 500. So using this macro just changes all those white cells for you automatically. And now we're ready to, to look at our data. So comparing our notes, let's go back to the, the last one, the very first slide of our lecture. We had the 0, 2 as the, or so k was 0, t sub 0 and y sub 0 were 0 and 2. Then we found uh, our first slope, s1, was 1. That led us to a what would have been Euler's next point, which is 0 0.5, 2 0.5. Then we plugged that into the function and got 1.25, which is our S2. And then we found M sub 0 by doing their average. And that's how we got this number here. And then we use that slope with our step size to get this new Y coordinate. So this confirms the 2.5625 that we did by hand. But now we are working with uh, a new step size. Step size now is 0.2. All the data changes. You do not need to change the uh, these other white cells because this is still the same differential equation. You, only when you go to a new differential equation do you need to change the white cells in columns H and K. So our initial conditions still look good. 0 and 2. 0.2 is our new step size. And uh, the actual data we want is in the first two columns here the t sub k and y sub k. All the rest of this is just calculational tools that you don't need to worry about. But here's the data. I'm going to use this data here from 0 to 1 is what we wanted. So I highlighted that data and now I'm going to enter it into my table in my notes. I'm going to round everything uh, to 5 
the nearest, the five decimal places like you see all the other data here. So when t is 0.2, our prediction is that y should be 2.21, and then I'll put three zeros after that. When t is 0.4, our prediction says that the new y coordinate should be 2.44205. When our t is 0.6, our prediction for the new y coordinate is 2.698465. And then I'm going to round, so the 6.5, I'm going to round 5, when it's 5 or higher, digits 5 or higher, and round up. So 6.5 will round to 7. Okay. When t is 0.8, our prediction now says that y should be 2.98185. And then finally, when t is 1, our prediction says that y should be 3.294894, so just to 89. Okay, now here are the exact uh, y coordinates because we happen to know the exact solution to this particular differential equation, so we can compare our approximations and, and the reality of the solution. But you'll notice that uh, the initial conditions, of course, are all the same. And using Euler's method, we got 2.2 is the next uh, prediction, but the reality is 2.21034. And notice that the second order, the improved Euler method, or the second order runga kutta method, gives us a slightly more accurate answer here. In fact, you'll notice that every single entry in this table, in the middle table here, is in between the uh, less accurate approximations and then the exact answer. So we have improved approximations by doing this method instead. All right, uh, the next slide. Use technology to perform the improved Euler's method to fill in the tables below. Compare the results to each other and to the exact solution. So now we're only going to be doing second order Runga Kutta. It's the exact same differential equation, same initial condition, but our step sizes are different. So I'm going to return to our spreadsheet. Nothing needs to be changed except the, except the step size. I'm going to plug in 0.1 for a step size. Okay, now we want to track the data in our spreadsheet that will give us the data we want for this particular table. Notice I'm doing a lot of skipping. I'm not increasing t by 0.1. I'm saying according to this data, by the time t gets to 1, what is the predicted y value? So I'm going to look at this point right here in our table. When t is 1, we have a predicted y value using the second order Runga Kutta and H step size of 0.1, that our prediction is 3.29678. Now I want to predict, you know, if I continue the step size of 0.1, eventually I'm going to get to when T is 2 and see what our prediction is at this time. And it's, it's 5.43438. And then skip into the table until we get to a t coordinate of 3, which is right here. And we have 8.95798 is our approximation. Skip ahead in the table until we get to a time 4 and plug that in. And we get 14.76625. And then finally, scroll down until we get to a t of 5. And the predicted y coordinate is 24.34055. All right, so already compare these results to the exact results from the solution to the differential equation. And you can see we are not far off. And then you might want ask yourself, well, what's going to happen if I just do a smaller step size? Smaller step sizes will improve our approximating uh, techniques, you just have to do more data crunching to get to these same distances. Because if I'm doing a step size of 0.1, then it's take 100 calculations just to get to time 1. 200 to get to time 2. Right? Over here, when you're doing a step size of 0.1, we did essentially 10 steps to go from 0 to 1, but now we're doing 100 steps to go to 0 to 1. And But it's more calculations, but we're going to have a more accurate answer. So let's go ahead and back to our spreadsheet change the step size to 0.1, or sorry, 0.01 instead, hit enter. And now we have to track in our data where we get to these different times. We got to go all the way down till we get to time one. And it's right here. 
And at time one, using a step size of 0.01, we have an approximation of 3.297436. So I'm going to make that four, the three six, I'll round to, round to the four. Okay, let's pause for a second. Notice how rounding to five decimal places, we are already effectively matching the exact solution. Okay, let's go in our table and go down to the where t is two. That's way down here. And we get 5.43654. Notice that we now have a slight discrepancy, but it's super close. In general, the, the more you it, repeat this process, the further away you get from, from t equals zero, the worse the approximations tend to get. That's not always the case. We saw some examples where when a graph is leveling off that the solutions actually, the approximations approach the exact solution. So it's not always the case that this divergence will happen, but we see it appears that it seems to be happening here. Let's see if it continues in this case. Go back to my table, scroll all the way down until I get to three as my t, and then read that uh, t, that h, or sorry, that uh, y coordinate, which is eight, point nine six three three two two so just two notice again we have a discrepancy at the end a discrepancy that appears to be widening uh, scroll in our table down to the four entry when time is four the y coordinate is predicted to be fourteen point seven 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 nine nine And finally, let's get down all the way to when t is 5, which happens to be at the bottom of this table. Hopefully you don't need more than 500 rows in your work. Um, if, if so, you just have to add more rows and copy these formulas down. But anyway, when t is 5, we are predicting a y-coordinate of 24.364735. I'll change that to 74. All right, so we do notice that these approximations are significantly closer to the, well, they're closer, we'll say, closer to the exact solution than doing the second order Runge Kutta with a smaller step size. So second order Runge Kutta is better than Euler's, and then, of course, decreasing your step size leads to even better approximations. Okay, now another method for approximating solutions to first order ODEs is known as the fourth order Runge Kutta method. We're going to use technology to approximate the solution to this ODE, same ODE, on the same time interval, 0 to 1, uh, using the indicated step size, and we'll compare the approximation to the exact solution, to Euler's method, and to improve Euler's method. So here, this collection of tables shows all four. Here's Euler's method already filled in for us. Here's the second order Runge Kutta which we just did above, but here it is filled in for us. Uh, the exact solution is over here, and we're going to do something called the fourth order and see how that improves our approximations. Notice we're doing the same uh, step size for all of these, so we're going to remain consistent there. So now you're going to want to go back to, to use the fourth order Runge Kutta method. Go back to Canvas, uh, go to the Sheet 3, and open that. Again, it will open in a view-only mode, so just go to File and make a copy so that you can edit it. And I'm just going to switch over to my personal account so I can edit this. Okay, this one's a lot busier. There's a lot more calculations here, and I'm not going to focus on the uh, mechanics or the rationale behind this formula. What it's effectively doing is it's using several points near 0 to, to get a variety of slopes. All these S, S's are different slopes. There's four different slopes. And then it combines those slopes in the following way. It does the first slope plus twice the second slope plus twice the third slope plus the, plus the last slope and divides it by six. This is a weighted average of slopes to get the actual slope that we use, the m slope right here, that we're going to use to construct the next point. Uh, I'm not going to ask you to make sense of this particular algorithm. Feel free to look it up on your own and uh, try to make sense of the calculations you're seeing here. But uh, this table, or this will give us approximations over here in, into this these first two columns that we will use, and the method is the fourth order Runge Kutta. 
Now again, it's just the white cells, so columns H, K, N, and Q have to be changed, as do the initial conditions and the step size. Everything else is automatic for you. So following these instructions you see over here again, enter the appropriate formula in cell H3. This should say H5. I'm going to change my copy to say that later, because H5 is right here, this cell. We just make sure that this cell is doing the right function. And then we're going to do the macro to copy it to all four of these columns automatically. And this table also goes down only to uh, the fifth hundred iteration. And you shouldn't need more than that for your homework or tests. Okay, so let's make sure everything is uh, correctly in place. We're doing the same ODE, so we have 0, 02 is the initial point, step size of 0.2. That's what we want for this one, yes, that's already correct. Let's check our formula here. It's equal to 0.5 times G5. G5 is this cell right here, so uh, this, if you click next to the formula here, it'll highlight the cells that are used in the calculation. So yes, this is the correct ODE. It's equal to, y prime is equal to 0.5 times the y coordinate. So we do 0.5 times the cell that has the y coordinate right here. We do not use the, the t coordinate. Then the rest of this, oh, then you got to make sure that this formula is copied to all of these columns. Every time you switch to a new differential equation, you got to you got to do that. Now, I believe this particular, I opened it and it's already, uh, all these formulas are already the correct formula, but just to make sure you go you can be anywhere actually, it doesn't matter where you are, but if you go to tools and you do macros and say copy formula, it's going to replace those four columns. And that just made sure that all four of these columns are doing the same, referencing the same function, the same ODE. Okay, now we're prepared to fill in some data up through from time zero to time one. So that data right there is what I want to copy over to my table. So when t is 0.2, we predict that the y-coordinate will be 2.21034. When t is 0.4, we predict the y-coordinate to be 2.442805. So I'm going to change that to 281. When uh, we're at 0.6, we're predicted that the y-coordinate will be 2.6. 99717, so 2.69972. At 0 0.8, we're predicting 2.983648, so that around a 5. And then finally, when t is 1, we're predicting 3.29745. Okay, now notice that when we round to the nearest, uh, what is that, tenth, hundred thousandth, ten thousandth, hundred thousandth, when we round to five decimal places, it turns out that so far our approximations are actually matching our exact solution. Now, of course, they, they're not exactly the same. If we showed more decimals, we would eventually see that they're not the same. But given the decimals that we are currently viewing, given our rounding, the fourth order is giving us exact answers. If we were to continue and go on to t equals 2, and then t equals 3, and then t equals 5, maybe we would start to see some peeling away uh, from the exact solution. And then when you compare the uh, fourth order to the second order and to the original Euler's method, you can see that the fourth order is an improvement on both of them. Okay, in the next slide, use technology, and this is our last slide. Use technology to perform the fourth order runga kutta method to fill in the tables below. Compare the results to each other and to the exact solution. All right, so we've finally switched to a new differential equation and a new initial condition. We're going to do fourth order twice, but with different step sizes. And then our exact solution is here. That table already filled in. Okay, so back to our spreadsheet. I'm going to start making a few changes. The initial conditions. The initial t is 1, and the initial y is 1.25. The step size we'll use is 0.1. Okay, the next thing I want to do is change the differential equation. Change this cell here, so I'm going to delete that. And our differential equation says to do negative 2 times t times y squared. So I'm going to write down equal negative 2 times 
the T coordinate. So click on the T cell right here next to it. So times F5 and then times the Y coordinate and then that needs to be squared and then hit enter. And that gives us this number here. Now, so far, this of all these columns, this is the only cell with the correct formula. All of these still have the old formula from doing the other differential equation. So now you want to do tools, go to macros and copy formula, and it should replace for you the four uh, columns. So if you click anywhere here and click next to this, you should see that, that structure of doing negative 2 times the corresponding t coordinate that's right next to it times the corresponding y coordinate that's right next to it squared. So this formula was copied everywhere. And now we can use this uh, data to start filling in our tables and our notes. So when t is 1, we had a 1.25 initial uh, point here. So that's in our table already. Now we want to scroll down to when t is 2, which is right here. And when t is 2, our uh, point 0.1 step size with a fourth order runga kata predicts that the y coordinate should be 0 0.263167. So I'll just say it right, 17 is the next two. Then skip ahead in the table to when uh, t is 3, and we get a prediction of 0 0.113638. So I'll round that to 4. Skip ahead in the table to when t is 4, and we get a prediction of 0 0.063292. So it's 329. We'll stop there. Scroll ahead to when t is uh, 5, and our prediction is 0 0.040323. So we'll stop there at the 2. And then skip to when t is 6, which is right here. And we have 0 0.0. Two seven nine three three. So I'll stop right there. Five decimals. All right, and you can now go ahead and compare that to the exact answers. As you can see, they're not far off at all. Looks like I might have given some extra decimals over here on this one as well. And now let's do the step size of point zero one. Okay, so we, now we have to scroll down pretty far to get to a t coordinate of 2. Find that t coordinate 2, there it is, and copy that. So we have 0. Point, for the y coordinate, we have 0. 0.263158. And rounding to the nearest fifth decimal place, that's going to be 1, 6. Scroll down to the table until we get to the t coordinate being 3, which I found right here. And our corresponding y coordinate is 0 0.113636. So that's going to be 6, 4. Scrolling down to when t is 4, it happens right there, we get 0 0.063299. Scrolling down to when t is 5, it happens right here, we have 0 0.04. 032. And finally, scroll down to when t is 6, the very bottom of our table here. It's the 500th calculations because we started at t equals 1, if you recall. But we have 0 0.027933. So I'll just put a 3 there. Okay, you'll notice that compare this row here, the fourth order, Rangakata, at h equals 0 0.01 is more accurate than when h is 0.1. But then from then on, it looks like we pretty much, when we're rounding to the nearest fifth, that they were all essentially the same accuracy. So there is sometimes, the reason why and we're getting some improved accuracy too is because the, this particular solution is approaching an asymptote. And so the approximations, if they're trapped underneath it, they're all going to have to get pinched, if you will, the squeeze theorem or the pinch theorem, and all get closer to reality. So that's what's going on here. But... There are times when it doesn't make sense to do more calculations, right, and do h equals 0 0.01. That perhaps a larger h will require less computing power and still give us the accuracy that we are looking for. And that wraps up our lesson on Runga Kutta approximation methods.